In this demo for SnapMirror Synchronous introduced in ONTAP 9.5, I will showcase how to set up an SMS protection relationship and fail over to the secondary storage volume for a NAS workload using NFS v3 protocol. Here the source is a two node cluster running on tap version 9.5. The first step is to ensure you have the necessary licenses for this cluster. You require the snap mirror license that comes as part of the premium bundle and a capacity based snap mirror synchronous license which can be added if not done already. Let's confirm that the SMS license was added successfully. Since SnapMirror Synchronous in the ONTAP 9.5 release supports protocols like iSCSI, FC, and NFS v3, let's confirm that NFS v3 protocol is enabled on the SVM and create a source volume in this SVM. Give this volume a name. Select a suitable aggregate on which to create this volume. Ensure the storage type selected is NAS and specify a size for this volume to be created. As you can see, the volume has been created successfully of type read write. Let's identify the network interface using which we can gain NFS access to this volume and mount this source volume on a client for NFS access. So first let's create a mount point and then mount this volume on that mount point. Let's use the df command to list the amount of disk space available. Change directory and start to create a few files in this mount point. Once the files have been created, let's proceed with creating the data protection relationship for this volume. Select synchronous from the dropdown for replication. The intuitive help me choose pop-up guides you to settings based on the SLAs driven by your business. The corresponding mode for synchronous replication is selected in the dropdown list. In the synchronous mode, if the write to the secondary storage does not complete for any reason, the application is allowed to continue writing to the primary storage. Whereas in strict synchronous mode, if the IO to the secondary storage does not complete for any reason, then the application IO fails and the synchronous replication is terminated. Specify the destination volume for the snap mirror synchronous relationship. The destination cluster and SVM that you select needs to be paired with the source, SVM and cluster. Also what you need to keep in mind is that the destination cluster also needs to be of ONTAP version 9.5 or later. Click on save and it will prompt you with a warning indicating that strict sync is the policy selected. Check the checkbox and click on OK. Now let's go to the destination cluster, go to the protection relationships to view this newly created snap mirror synchronous data protection relationship. You will notice that the synchronous transfer is currently in progress from the transfer status. You can choose to periodically click on refresh to confirm the transfer status of this relationship. Once the synchronous transfer is complete, you will notice that the transfer status is in sync with none as the lag time. Now let's go to volumes to view the status of this destination volume. What you will notice is that the destination volume in the snap mirror synchronous relationship is of type DP. Now, in order to be able to read from the destination volume of a snap mirror synchronous relationship, you need to clone that volume. Let's give it a suitable name for this volume and ensure you have the most recent snapshot selected from which to clone this volume. Once the clone operation completes, you will notice this newly created clone, which is of type read write. 
in order to be able to read or write into this clone volume it is important that you mount the junction path for this volume now let's identify the suitable nfs data lists using which we can access this clone destination volume first create the mount point and then map it to the cloned destination volume now let's change directory to the mount point location and list the available files that have been replicated synchronously from the source to the destination. Now in order to fail over to the secondary storage volume, the first step is to quiesce the existing snap mirror synchronous relationship. Check the checkbox and click on quiesce. Once the relationship is quiesced, the next step is to break the relationship. Now the relationship status is shown as broken off. What you will notice is that the destination volume of the snap mirror synchronous relationship is now of type read write. Once again, let's mount the junction path for the destination volume. Now once again, let's create a mount point and map it to the destination volume of the snap mirror synchronous relationship, which is currently of type read write. When you change directory to the mount path and list the files, you will see all the files that were available on the source written to the destination as well. Since the failover from the primary storage system to the secondary volume on the secondary storage system in a separate data center with minimal disruption, clients can now continue to write to this volume. As you saw in this demo, when disaster disables the primary site of a snap mirror synchronous relationship, you can serve data from the destination volume with minimal disruption.